Hey guys, this is Kerry, and in this video we're going to be designing this calculator. Um, so let's take a look at how this calculator is going to work. The goal is going to be to put a number here, and then put a different number here, and then when we press these buttons, it should actually take 35 and 7 and give us, when we add them, 42, when we subtract them, 28, when we multiply them, 35 times 7, whatever that is. Um, all right, so what we're going to start off with is just like we normally do for a project, we're going to try to design the HTML, then the CSS, and then the JavaScript. So let's go to the replet, make sure that we're logged in, and create a new REPL. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, just like always, and we can call this calculator, and I'll call it calculator1. So let's create a new REPLIT. All right, uh, so we've gone through this exercise a couple of times, um, but I made this rough draft of the calculator this morning so that we could kind of review it one more time. Whenever we're trying to create an app, we often have an image in our head of what the app looks like or an image um, maybe that your teacher gives you that you're trying to reproduce. So looking at this app here, I'm trying to figure out what elements are going to be important for us to have. And many of the elements here are familiar, but there are a couple that are unfamiliar. So what we are going to have is we're going to have the whole app encapsulated in a box, which means we need to have div for the whole app. I'll put an enter there. Then we're going to have an h1 element for calculator. So let's do h1 calculator. We'll need to have an h2 element that says something like by carry or whatever. Uh, then here we start to encounter some new elements. So these two elements um, are going to be input elements. So I'm going to make one input. And you'll notice that an input is like an image. It doesn't have a closing tag, so there is no slash input. And really quickly, the way that you auto-generate that whole text is you just type in input and then tab. And it will auto-generate everything you need. In between the two inputs, we're going to have a paragraph, and I'm going to start it off with plus. And of course, when we click the different buttons, the operation will change. So uh, let's put it as plus here. So we have calculator by carry, input, plus, paragraph, input. OK, then we're going to need to have another paragraph, which will be our answer paragraph. And I'm starting to think that the answer and the symbol here may be styled differently. So at this point, it's a good idea to give them a class or an ID so we can style them specially. I am going to give them an ID because each of them is uh, the only one of its type. So uh, this one, I'll give an ID of, I don't know, operation uh, text. And then this one, we can give an ID of answer because this is where the answer to the math problem is going to appear in this last paragraph. And then lastly down here we've got five buttons and I want to show you a shorthand way for creating buttons with IDs. So I want to create a button and each of these buttons is going to have to do different things. So what we can do is we can type in button hashtag add and if we press tab now it will generate a button with an ID of add for our HTML. And the inner HTML that is just going to be a plus sign. Button, hashtag, subtract. And then the inner HTML of that will just be minus. And this is a shorthand way where HTML is smart, or sorry, Replit is smart enough to know that when we put a hashtag, uh, that what we really mean is create a button with this ID, tab. And then it does it, and that will be uh, that will be x. Oops. Button hashtag um, divide, and that's going to be slash. Button hashtag mod, and that's going to be the symbol for mod, which is a percent sign. Okay, so let's see how things are looking. All right, so you can actually see with this one that we have the whole calculator here. The rest of this is going to be styling and JavaScript. 
So uh, let's move on to doing some styling. So of course, I didn't construct this app luckily uh, the first time. It took me a lot of tries to get the numbers correct here. So hopefully um, I can kind of start to guess correctly with the numbers faster. So I was in a Halloween mood, I guess. I don't know, I made the body and then I made the background of it not that color, but orange. I took the div and I think I made the background of the div some sort of gray color, which using color picker, I think I got as 35, 35, 35. Let's see how things are looking now. Yeah, that looks about right. Cool. Um, I made the width of the div something like, I don't know, three, no, 250 pixels maybe, so that it would be more of an encapsulated app. Yeah, I think that's about the right width. To center the div, we use margin auto. And now it's centered. To center the stuff inside of the div, we do a text align center. Cool. Um, let's see. It looks like uh, the font here is white, so we can do color white. Oops, color white. All right, nice. Uh, let's see. All right, let's start to work on our buttons then. So for the buttons, you can select all the buttons because they all have this element type button. I know I could style them individually, but it's better just to style them all at once with uh, the element type here. Oops. So then we've got the buttons and let's see, to style them, they have a background of orange. Cool. They have no border, so I just took the border and made it zero pixels. Nice. They have, um, I gave them a fixed height and a fixed width so that they would be the same size. So let's do height, I think it was like 35 pixels and then width the same amount so that they look pretty good. Nice. All right, that's making me realize that they're right up against the bottom here. So I would like to add some space within my calculator element. So I am gonna put some padding on the div of maybe 10 pixels. Okay, that looks kind of good. I noticed that it made my width a little bit bigger. So um, there's a setting which can determine how you draw padding, whether it like um, expands the size of it or puts a space in the thing that's already provided. Um, and it also works with borders. This is a little bit hard to explain. Um, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna use a new selector, which is select everything on the page, which is star. And I like to use sizing that doesn't change the overall size of stuff. So I'm gonna do box sizing here. And there's a setting called border box, which is my preferred setting to work with for adding content. And you can see that we'll shrink it back to its original size here. All right, cool. So things are looking pretty good here. Um, one thing I noticed is that the answer space is like completely missing. So let's see if we can take that and style it so that it's not gonna be completely missing. Oops. Sorry, I accidentally put a W there. Just ignore that. All right, so let's see. Um, the answer space is this one with ID of answer. So I'll do select the thing with ID of answer. And then let's make the background black. And you'll notice that the answer space still doesn't appear and that's because it has nothing in it. So if we were to go over here and we were to put in just something random inside the answer, like, ah, you'll notice that now our answer space appears and it looks somewhat correct. Um, hmm. So we need to have something inside of the answer HTML in order for it to show up. 
but I don't want to have ah there and I don't want to just have a random number. So maybe your instinct would be to say, put some spaces and it will automatically put a period. I don't really want that. So let's see what happens. Uh, spaces doesn't work. So there's actually um, a symbol that we have to use when we want spaces to show up like that in HTML, which is this symbol right here. We're gonna do ends non blank space semicolon. And now we'll put a non blank space there. Uh, okay, cool, so that looks ready to go. All right, let's see. So next up, styling the inputs as well. They're both input type elements, so I'll make the background of those black. It looks like the color here for the text is going to be light green. Okay, let's see. Oh, the color didn't get updated. There we go. That's looking better already. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, it looks like these have a border on the left, and this one has a border on the top. So I'm going to add border left. I don't know. I think it was three pixels solid orange. And I think I'm just going to copy and paste this. And for the answer, I'll add border top with the same values there. Cool. That looks good. Um, I think I took the border off of the input, so before I add this border left, I am going to set the whole border to be nothing. There we go, that looks better. Now these are looking really tiny right now, so what we can do is we can do uh, something like height. Uh, let's see, I th think I want to cheat and see what the height was so that I'm not just guessing here. Let me go to my cheat sheet here, which is my complete one. Uh, for the input, ah, here we go. I did line height, 30 pixels. So I'm going to use that one here too. And then we also set the width of this to be 80 pixels. Let me just go back to the screen so that I'm not cheating too much here. All right, that looks a lot closer to this. That's great. I'll notice that when I type here and stuff, it doesn't actually appear in the center. So we'll throw a text align center on there so that when we type into our input elements that they appear in the center. Yep, let's give another refresh. There we go, 35 and four in the center. I think we probably wanna apply those same heights and widths into our answer elements so that this black space down here looks similar to these. All right, now I noticed that my answer is all the way to the left. A paragraph is a block type element, so it wants to take up this whole space. So what we can do is we can set the margin on both sides so that it's automatically in the center. Okay, there we go. Margin auto looks good, but it caused some other problems, which was it collapsed down the margin on the top and the margin on the bottom. So let's, after margin auto, let's do margin top, something like five pixels and margin bottom, something like five pixels as well. Let's see how that looks. Uh, five is not enough. We need 10 and 10, I think. And this is that whole process of guessing and checking with styling where we uh, can go in and kind of guess and check. All right, let's see. I don't like the amount of space on top of the H1. So H1 elements come with, oops, let me do that after the div because it's the first thing inside of the div. H1 elements come with some padding and some margin on top. I'm gonna take the margin on top of the H1 element and set it equal to zero pixels so that it shrinks down that gap on top. And I think that looks pretty close. Um, all right, so let's see. The font size for these things is bigger over here. So let's do that. We'll put for our buttons a font size of, I don't know, something like 25 pixels. Let's see how that looks. That looks about right. So then I'm gonna set the font size for answer and input 
to 25 pixels as well. Let's see how this looks. And you'll notice that it takes me a couple of refreshes to get. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Um, I also think that the font here is a little bit different than the fonts that I have. So this top font you may recognize from Google Fonts, it's Lobster. So uh, I'm just gonna look up Lobster font, one of my favorite fonts. I'm gonna use Google Fonts. So I'm going to copy these three link lines of code which you'll recognize as HTML because they have the greater than and less than signs. So these need to go into our HTML file. And I like to put them before the style link because the way I think about it is before we link in our style.css file, which is what this line of code is doing here, we should download the fonts so that we can access it. And this used to matter, but I think because of this pre-connect thing here, uh, even if we put these links below our style sheet, it will load the font in time for us to use it. But now these three links connect the Google font, load it into our website. And now for the H1, I want to use font family lobster, oops, capitalized lobster. And that's just this line here basically, but I didn't copy and paste it. I just wrote it. All right, now for the H2 and the other fonts on the website here, you'll notice that they look a little bit more computer-like than the fonts that automatically come with this. So what I did other than that was I said, for the input elements, use font family monospace. This is a font that comes with our computer or with every computer, so we don't have to link it in. So I'm gonna add font family monospace to this, to the answer, to the buttons, and to the H2. All right, that looks better. Oh, hey, look, my buttons weren't styled like this before, but I like that, I'm gonna keep it like that. Um, and then lastly, let's see. Oh, it looks like this plus sign is weird as well, and there's no line there. So let's do those two. That line is actually a border bottom on our H2. So I'm going to uh, grab that same border that we put on the input elements or on the answer element. I'm going to paste that into the H2 and I'm going to add border bottom there. Oh, there we go, border bottom. It looks like we need some space between us and the border bottom space between an element and its edges. Space within an element is called padding. So we probably want some padding on the bottom uh, of something like, I don't know, uh, five pixels, let's try. And so this is that guess and check. It looks like I used a little bit more here, but I'm okay with this for now. Uh, it looks like there's too much space here. It looks like this is the wrong size. So let's see, that thing being the wrong size, we should handle. That has operation text as its ID, so let me copy that. And then I can go down here and I can say, take the thing with ID of operation text and let's apply the same font size and the same font family to it. Okay, that looks better, but we have these huge gaps now. So maybe I can say margin top zero pixels, margin bottom zero pixels and get rid of those gaps. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, and then let's push down the whole app so it's a little bit off the top of the screen here. So let's go to our div which contains everything in it and let's add a margin on top, the space between an element and its edges, or the edges, sorry, the space between an element's edges and the other elements around it is margin. So we'll do 100 pixels here. That's a little big. Maybe it was like 50 pixels, I don't know. Um, 
yeah, I guess it's more like 50 pixels. And it's not a completely exactly accurate clone, but it's pretty close here. Uh, maybe there's a box shadow here. Yeah, it looks like there's a box shadow on the div. So let's add that in. And I think it's the classic carry box shadow of one pixel, one pixel, 10 pixels, RGBA, 0, 0, 0, 0 0.3 or something. And now we've got the box shadow there. Um, and there's a couple more things I think that you could play around with, but I think this is good enough for our video. Uh, let's see. Oh, one thing that's not obvious is that these are buttons. So the last thing that maybe we should do is make it more obvious to the user that these are clickable. So down below buttons, maybe an effect that would make them obvious that they're clickable is when the user hovers over them, make the, uh, hmm, make the cursor into the pointer. And then you could do something like, I don't know, background light green or something. And now it's going to be really obvious to the user which one they're about to click and that they're actually clickable. And you could have gone for more subtle effects, but this is kind of nice. So I think this is a good place for me to stop and for you to try to change some of the styling so that it more matches your vision of what a calculator should look like. Uh, and then tomorrow we'll add the functionality to our calculator so that uh, it actually works. Uh, and that should actually be pretty easy because it's just five different event listeners. See you guys tomorrow.